oh my gosh, nothing. I mean, nothing could prepare me for this. Nothing in the trailers, nothing that I read. This completely caught me off guard. All right, so I got to check out Alien Romulus yesterday, and here's my full review. This is going to include some spoilers, so if you didn't see the movie yet and you don't want it spoiled, just save the video, come back, and check it out later. Alien Romulus, this movie takes place in between the first Alien and Aliens, which is the second Alien film. Starting the first act of the film, I think it looked pretty good. We were down on the surface, which you don't get to see much in Alien films, and it kind of gave us a glimpse of where everything was. I like the, the, the designs of everything throughout the whole film, the set designs on the ships and everything like that, because they kind of take the approach of the future past tech, and what I mean by that is, this is what future tech, what we thought future tech was going to look like in the past. The film starts off with the main protagonist, Rain, and she's with someone named Andy, who she's talking as if this is her brother. Uh, it's a black guy. Kind of reminds me of Franklin from uh, Snowfall. Yeah, that guy. They're talking over some food, and he's giving corny dad jokes, which I think are hilarious. I love the corny dad jokes. It was a theme throughout the whole film, and I enjoyed it. They, to me, it was it was a good addition. But we come to find out that Andy isn't actually a real person. He's a synthetic. I'm going to be completely honest. Here in the first act of the film, I didn't like Andy at all. He's supposed to be a synthetic, which is like, you know, a robot that's like a human. Blade Runner, all those things. Ugh. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen this movie. He just seemed like, uh, originally I just thought he was like an autistic guy or something. And it was just acting really strange. But they go into detail, explain of how he came about and how he's a little glitchy. So he's not all there. But I, I'm not going to even kid you. Sitting through this part, I was like, man, I can't stand Andy. Why is he in the film? I, I just can't take it. Like, get this guy out of here. What is he going to do when aliens come around? The film progresses. Our star Rain is trying to get off the planet and go to another planet. She wants to see sunshine and things like that. She's putting in her work hours. Apparently, you need a certain amount of work hours to get off the planet or get a visa or whatever it is. She goes to get this taken care of, and she's shut down by the government basically railroading her to keep her on the planet and work in the mines, which we found out is where her parents died. This takes us to the next part of the journey where she meets up with some friends. I can't really tell how old these people are supposed to be in the film. Are they supposed to be like teenagers, a little over teenagers? Are they supposed to be adults? I really don't know, but I'm going to say they're supposedly on the younger side. That's what I took from it. But they have their own ship and they see a ship coming into their orbit. They find it. They said they can go up there find things that they need so they can make this trip to the other planet. The thing that they mainly need is cryo chambers. That's so they can freeze themselves, go to sleep, make the nine year journey to this other planet, wake up and basically be the same age. That's how it works. So they set up this expedition to go up to this, what they think is just a decommissioned ship. When they get up there, they realize it's basically a space station and they get on the space station. And of course, what's there? aliens so this is where the film starts picking up just a little bit for me we discover that one of the main characters is pregnant we see them go onto the space station they were looking around we see all these alien things we know what's going on the acid burning through things they find a, a, a synthetic burned up on the ground it's just starting to get the eerie spooky quiet vibe that i expected from aliens and that i wanted from this movie they eventually reach a chamber where there are a ton of face huggers just in cryostasis there and of course they break it the temperature in the ship rises which thaws them out and all hell breaks loose there was a cool little tidbit in there about ripley kicking the queen alien out of the ship and that's the alien that they recovered and the alien that started all of this on this station so i like how they try to connect it there with a little bit of lore but didn't dive too much into it so they didn't ruin anything i thought that was cool it's also at this point which i say starts the second act where they give Andy an upgrade. Now, they get a chip from a synthetic that is halfway damaged there. He goes by Rook. There was a bishop before Rook. I see what they're doing there. But anyway, they give Andy an upgrade. And Andy goes from being one of my least favorite characters in the film all the way up to probably my favorite character in the film at that point it was like a complete 180 the second act of andy was just 
phenomenal to me. I love the way they did it. It was a rapid progression because it was just an upgrade, but I think this really changed things and it changed the dynamic. The whole character dynamic of Andy just being like, kind of like a loser in the first act and nobody respected him, I mean, nobody feared him. But after this upgrade, I mean, Andy's super fast, he's super strong, he's super smart and just changed the whole dynamic of everything. And one of the characters who really didn't like synthetics because he was going through a whole iRobot, they chose the wrong thing, my parents died thing. Yeah, he had a big confrontation with Andy and I think it was great then that that whole thing. Eventually, of course, one of the main characters gets face hugged, chest buster, busts out their chest, you know, the whole shebang. At one point, Andy gets to talk to the other synthetic and he basically explains he has a new prime directive, which was his own prime directive, protect Rain, the main character of the story. Now his new directive, protect the company. So this changes Andy in another way. And now instead of just protecting the girl all the time, he's protecting the best interests of the company, which is not always in the best interest of the people that are around. Andy basically turns into a diabolical psycho who will kill you if he has to or whatever it takes. So in order for him to stop the alien from getting out, he tries to get rid of the girl who had the face on her on her face, but she escapes, she gets away with one of the other guys who doesn't like synthetics. And of course, eventually, Busts out her chest. We got our first alien. He's tearing things up. Movie starts to get a little better now. From here on out, we see a ruthless version of Andy. I mean, he will do whatever it takes to make sure the prime directive, which is to get this new synthetic alien hybrid drug back to the company. This causes all types of discord between the group because Andy starts making really questionable decisions. Actually, one of the major scenes is when the pregnant girl comes to the ship door and there's an alien basically stalking her. Andy has a choice to open the door or not. And while his, her brother and Rain, the main character, are screaming for Andy to open the door, he kind of just observes and says, well, that alien is waiting for us to open the door. And if we do, he's going to kill all of us. So... Sorry, but pregnant girl has to die. And he kind of just sits there in such a just devoid way. And he's just like, hey, this is the, the best interest of all of us. And the alien grabs her up. And it was just like a crazy, amazing scene. I think that was great writing. I think it was a shocking moment. It sent so much for the film. And going forward, knowing that they have to deal with Andy because he's such a logical being, they still have to trust what he's saying because he's not a liar. But it's still, he doesn't have your best interest in mind. So I think as much as the aliens are terrifying, Andy becomes one of the scariest things in the film at this point. And I say at this point because, oh, it gets crazy. We get some typical alien action going on, you know, creepy walking, dark rooms, the sets and the environments all work great for me. Some of the music was a tad bit off in my opinion, but I still enjoyed it. It wasn't much music. Most of it is silence and I really did enjoy it like that. Andy reaches his directive of getting this hybrid alien human serum thing. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but it basically was something that they created to help human evolution to increase the durability and longevity of humans by using the xenomorph DNA and mixing it together. Here's also where we get the characters getting guns that they can't use because if they shoot the aliens acid blood and it'll melt through the hull, they'll fly out. We get it. But they say maybe we'll use the guns just to scare them off. I don't know what kind of alien memory they have if they know what guns are or if that scares them i thought that was pretty weird or maybe it was just a throwaway line but i've i didn't see that be apparent in the movie so I, I, that's a little questionable to me i just want to know who decided on that and why we eventually get to the point where andy gets reverting back to his original android autistic self it's just him and rain left and they have to fight off a horde of aliens this scene while they're waiting by the elevator, I think is also a great scene. And I really do praise this film for having some great things they added into it and it fits so well in the whole Aliens lore. They are managed to turn off the gravity in the ship. That was a thing that was going on throughout the film. Rain realizes if she shoots the aliens while in zero gravity, of course the alien blood won't splatter around and go through the hull. So now you have this scene of 
rain shooting this gun in anti-gravity with aliens just coming at you in all types of ways getting shot some may think it's kind of cheesy kind of reminiscent of the godzilla kong anti-gravity thing that just happened and people hate it but i think it was pretty good in this film and pretty innovative i liked it a lot what happens when the gravity comes back on of course so they have to do like this floating swimming air thing through all of this acid that's around and i think this was a pretty entertaining scene you know it's hard to take so much suspenseful things and aliens and ships and do so much with so little and a small cast and these claustrophobic rooms that just make me feel like i was claustrophobic and i'm not but i think this scene was great i loved it of course they managed to make it back to the ship and this brings us to our third act on the film the pregnant girl the pregnant girl i forget her name i don't remember her name we'll get to the things i don't like about this movie in a second but the pregnant girl injects herself with the serum or whatever it's called and of course her baby starts to rapidly grow and she begins to give birth this is not a chest burster this is not a xenomorph or a regular xenomorph popping out this is a pregnancy she produces like an egg and rain the main character tries to run off with it and get rid of it because she knows what's going on now and out drops a little baby face that looks kind of like one of those prometheus guys of all things right yes makes sense and this third act which i thought the film was basically over i already had so much excitement at this point i said hey this is where i give it i already had a rating in my head the third act this came about and oh my gosh, nothing. I mean, nothing could prepare me for this. Nothing in the trailers, nothing that I read. This completely caught me off guard and I was completely taken back. Here I seen one of the most terrifying, horrific, disgusting creatures I've ever seen in cinema. Like they really want all the way all the way to the wall with making such a disgusting just like no redeemable quality some people might even see an alien or a predator and be like hey look he's cool or you know they might like each other i don't think anything not even a mother <laughs> the mother's in the movie not even a mother could like this thing this thing is just a, a disgusting creature part xenomorph part um progenitor whatever from prometheus like just a disgusting abomination and he is ruthless i don't even know what his purpose is he's just trying to kill and man this third act was aliens to me this gave me and hey feel how you feel this gave me that ripley feeling up until this point i like rain eh second act rain a little better first act rain i didn't really care for but this third act now i'm not comparing i'm not saying this is ripley but this is the ripley moment here this is where rain gives us more this is where her fighting this creature i'm actually at the edge of my seat like holy night this this was good and it was a big surprise i didn't think they were going to go that direction i didn't think the third act was going to be this suspenseful she has a full-on drawn out knockdown fight with this thing and i i was terrified and amazed and i enjoyed it very much that bumped the movie up for me so much and man great job there guys great job give me my money's worth because i didn't know in the beginning of this film i did not think i did not think i was gonna love it okay so that's my very basic spoilery rundown of the film and how everything went now let's talk about things in the film and let's get a rating here first off the characters and the acting i don't think the acting was horrible i don't think it was great for a lot of the characters i can say they weren't really memorable to me i don't know how memorable you need to be in an alien film you don't make it out most of you but outside of andy and uh, maybe the other guy the older brother nobody really did it for me nobody really made me feel connected or anything uh they kind of forced rain down my throat so by the end of the film yeah but i still i don't have the feeling of hey i need to see more rain like it's not a it's not that strong i don't even remember a lot of the characters names so i would say mm, the characterization the progression of the characters their motives they were all loosely shaped nothing really in depth i'm not gonna give a high score for that the acting and the characterization mm, wasn't great 
design. I love the set designs, the visuals. I don't know why everything in the future looks so dirty. I don't know if they have new. I would like to see what a new ship looks like in like alien times. Like what are they in 2200s? I would like to see what a fresh a fresh ship looks like because everything is just horrible and dirty and disgusting. But the environments fit and I think they look good. The, the, the sounds were good. All of that was great. The Xenomorph action, I don't know. I kind of went into it thinking we were going to get maybe this alien one vibe, like this one stalker Xenomorph that's just terrifying these group of kids or whatever they are. But they kind of gave us a bunch. There was machine guns in it. I don't know. I guess it was okay, but it made up for the fact with the final act and that creature at the end kind of made up for all of that because it was like, hey, this ain't even about Xenomorphs anymore. What the, is this thing? This thing is ridiculous. So character designs, I, I'll give them that. You, you freaked me out. You freaked me out, all right? Well, I mean, you freaked me out. The story, I would say, was decent. and gave them a reason to do what they did. It gave them a reason to be on a ship. It gave them a reason to be isolated. So I'm not too mad at the story because it gave me everything that I wanted. It didn't have to be due too deep. It didn't add that much to the lore, but there were some points here and there. If you're deep into the alien lore and you want to comment on some of the things in Easter eggs, because I know there were a few, please do, because I would like to know more. I'm going to look into it more. I haven't seen all of the films recently, so I'm going to check that out. One thing I didn't really like about the character was Andy's power scale. It was kind of a weird plot driven power scale. I mean, at one point he was basically defenseless and it seemed like any human can beat the crap out of him, which in the beginning of the film, a bunch of kids did jump him. But then later in the film, I know he got his upgrade. At times he seemed strong, like he could pry open blast doors and he can catch an elevator in a hand and, and stop it. But I never seen him do anything when it came to the aliens. He should have been strong enough to maybe like rip one of their arms off or at least throw them into a wall or something. And it's kind of seemed that he was weak at times where he could have been strong and strong at times. I don't know. I don't understand his strength. I don't understand his, his power abilities at all or how they used it in the film. It seemed like he could have been more physical knowing that he was that strong because at one point he actually did hold up an elevator. Other little tidbits I had here and there, but Overall, I think the film was pretty good. And like I said, I really enjoyed the last act a lot. And I think it added to the franchise in a good way. I don't think this hurts the franchise. I think it's pretty good. I would put it before Alien 3, maybe. Maybe I'll try to watch that again. I don't know. I don't remember loving that film too much. But definitely is a watch for me. I'm going to give it a score. I'm definitely going to give it a 7 out of 10. Solid. No debate. Not questionable. The movie gave you what you wanted. It was suspenseful. Uh, had some horror elements to it. We got a little bit of lore. We got to see some people die. We got to see some aliens. We got to see some creatures we've never seen before. So definitely a solid seven. Do I want more aliens after this? I do. I actually think we should go on. Do I necessarily want more rain? Not necessarily. If they didn't bring her back, I hope it was a more veteran rain. Someone who like Ripley has been through it and we get to see her do more action things because I think the next film after having this one be so suspenseful, we should go to a little bit more action route. Maybe. I don't know. It's not up to me, but I'm down. The Alien franchise is alive. Just like the Predator franchise with Prey, loved that movie, kept it alive. Romulus, I think, is okay, okay enough to keep Aliens alive and say, let's do another film. That's my take on Alien Romulus. I hope you guys didn't get too confused because I didn't write a script for this review. I just did it off the top of my head. I don't know if I'm going to do that again because I feel like it's a jumbled mess. But I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments. Talk to you guys later. It's just Dale, man. I'm out.